and thanks for joining us for a Music and Mother Goose this morning. So today our theme is all about hungry animals. We have a really great story about a naughty little girl and the bears that she steals breakfast from, as well as some other fun songs about food and about animals. Let's get started today with our We Clap and Sing Hello song. Today, let's clap and sing hello and let's pat and sing hello. All right, so we'll put our two hands together, but we'll put them together flat. Okay, but first, are you ready to clap? Let's do it. We clap and sing hello. We clap and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we clap and sing hello. Can I see your big clap? All right, very good. Now let's pat. We pat and sing hello. We pat and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we pat and sing hello. And can I see your big pat? That was a big pat. So thanks for joining us today and let's get started with our hungry animals. So our first rhyme today is a really fun one to do together with your little one. And if you have an older child, you can do a really fun clapping pattern with your child. But this classic rhyme is pat a cake. All right, so our motions go like this. We'll do Pat a cake, so we'll clap and pat on our knees. Pat a cake, pat a cake, baker's men. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Then we'll roll it and pat it and mark it with a B. Then put it in the oven for baby and me. And like I said, this is a really fun pair song to do together. So I have a very special friend with me. We have a dragon ready for our fairy tale summer. All right, so hello dragon. It's nice to meet you. Are you ready to sing pat a cake? All right, so with your little one, this is a fun one to take their hands and do some clapping motions together. Let's say it again. So we have pat a cake, pat a cake, baker's men. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. We'll roll it and pat it and mark it with the B. Then put it in the oven for baby and me. All right, so lots of fun and good practice for rhythm and rhyming. Now, if you have an older child, you can also do one of our classic hand motions where we'll do clap and pat together, or you can get a little bit fancier and do some of our different direction hand motions. All right, so you can make it a little bit more difficult as you need to. today is about a little girl who really should have been more careful of walk when she was walking through the woods and the house that belongs to three bears that she finds along the way. So our book is Goldilocks and the Three Bears, retold and illustrated by James Marshall. So that means that he's telling the story and he's made the pictures. We have Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So there you can see we have Goldilocks, the little girl who's called Goldilocks because she has blonde or gold hair. And then where is she? In the home of the one, two, three bears. So once there was a little girl called Goldilocks. What a sweet child, said someone new in town. That's what you think, said a neighbor. Hmm. One morning, Goldilocks's mother sent her to buy muffins in the next village. You must promise not to take the shortcut through the forest, she said. I've heard that bears live there. I promise, said Goldilocks. But to tell the truth, Goldilocks was one of those naughty little girls who do exactly as they please. 
So do you think she listened to her mother or any of these signs? They say danger, very risky, not a good idea. Turn back, go the other way. And this is the shortcut. But is she taking the shortcut through the forest? Naughty Goldilocks. Then meanwhile, in a clearing deeper inside the forest, in a charming house all their own, a family of brown bears was sitting down to breakfast. Can you guess what they're making? Patooey! cried big old Papa Bear. This porridge is scalding. I've burned my tongue. I'm dying, cried Baby Bear. Now really, said Mama Bear, who was of a medium size, that's quite enough. So we have Papa Bear going up to We have Baby Bear who says, I'm dying, and Mama Bear who thinks they're both silly. I know, said Papa Bear. Why don't we go for a spin while the porridge is cooling? Excellent, said Mama Bear. So they got on their rusty old bicycle and off they went. So they're going for a bike ride to wait for their porridge to cool. And they're saying, tra la la. A few minutes later, who showed up? Goldilocks arrived at the bear's house. She walked right in without even bothering to knock. On the dining room table were three inviting bowls of porridge. I don't mind if I do, said Goldilocks, helping herself to the biggest bowl. Now, what was wrong with the biggest bowl of porridge? <gasps> but the porridge in the biggest bowl was much too hot. Patilly, cried Goldilocks, and she spat it out. Next, she tasted the porridge in the medium-sized bowl, but that porridge was much too cold. Then Goldilocks tasted the porridge in the little bowl, and it was just right. Neither too hot nor too cold. In fact, she liked it so much that she gobbled it all up. That's pretty greedy. Feeling full and satisfied, Goldilocks thought it would be great fun to have a look around. Right away, she noticed a lot of coarse brown fur everywhere. They must have kitties, she thought. Now, do you think that brown fur is from kitties or cats? Or is it from the bears? In the parlor, there were three chairs. I don't mind if I do, she said, climbing into the biggest one. But the biggest chair was much too hard, and she just couldn't get comfortable. So she's kind of sitting in it a funny way, too, though. Next, she sat in the medium-sized chair, but that chair was much too soft. She's sinking back into the chair, and she thought she might never get out of it. Then Goldilocks sat in the little chair that was just right. Neither too hard nor too soft. In fact, she liked it so much that she rocked and rocked until the chair fell completely to pieces. So she ate all of Baby Bear's porridge and she broke Baby Bear's chair. Poor Baby Bear. Now all of that rocking had left Goldilocks quite tuckered out. <sighs> I could take a little snooze, she said. So she went to look for a comfy place to nap. Upstairs were three beds. I don't mind if I do, said Goldilocks. And she got into the biggest one. But the head of the biggest one was much too high. That is a high head for a bed. Next, she tried the medium sized bed. But the head of that bed was much too low. Then Goldilocks tried the little bed and it was just right. Soon she was all nice and cozy and sound asleep. Can I hear your Goldilocks snore? Let's try it.
Yeah, I don't think she'd have a small snore. She did not hear the bears come home. So here she is in the little bear, in the little bed. Little bear's room is pretty messy. I wonder if they'll see her in there. The three bears were mighty hungry, but when they went in for breakfast, they could scarcely believe their eyes. Somebody has been in my porridge, said Papa Bear. Somebody has been in my porridge, said Mama Bear. Somebody has been in my porridge, said Baby Bear, and eaten it all up. Poor Baby Bear. In the parlor, the three bears were in for another little surprise. Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said Papa Bear. Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said Mama Bear. Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said Baby Bear, and broken it to smithereens. Poor Baby Bear. So where are they checking next? They checked the porridge. They checked the chairs. Do you remember what the third place was? Let's see what they find in the bedrooms. The three bears went upstairs on tiptoe, not knowing what they would discover. At first, everything seemed fine, but then Papa Bear lay down on his big brass bed. Somebody has been laying in my bed, he cried, and he was not amused. He is not very happy. Egads, cried Mama Bear. Somebody has been laying in my bed. Look, cried Baby Bear. Somebody has been lying in my bed. And she's still there. Oh, they do not look happy to see Goldilocks. Now see here, roared Papa Bear. Goldilocks woke up with a start and her eyes nearly popped out of her head. But before the bears could demand a proper explanation, Goldilocks was out of bed, out the window, and on her way home. Who was that little girl? said Baby Bear. I have no idea, said Mama Bear, but I hope we never see her again. And they never did. There she goes. Bye, bears. I hope they can fix Baby Bear's chair. So that's the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. So in the story of Goldilocks, the three bears were eating something really yummy for breakfast, where they were going to before they left and Goldilocks ruined it. So our next chant is all about peas porridge, and it's called peas porridge hot. Now peas porridge is a porridge that's sort of like oatmeal that's made from peas, and this is a classic nursery rhyme where we're actually not sure where it came from, but it goes something like this. And today I got my shakers. So this is a really fun one to practice some rhythm with, where we'll do our pattern. One, two, three, wait. One, two, three wait. So this is good practice for kids with that wait interval to have to kind of feel the rhythm and feel the pause. All right, getting a little high level. So it goes like this. Peas porridge hot. Peas porridge cold. Peas porridge in the pot nine days old. Then some like it hot. Some like it cold. Some like it in the pot nine days old. Right, and then you can do a big shake. And that second part, of course, is the second verse. So you can feel free to do just the peas porridge part. Right, but let's try it again. And this time we'll actually put down the shakers. For your little ones, you can feel free to keep shaking because they're really fun. And you can make something like this with uh, east with an Easter egg and dried peas or beans or some small like pieces of sand or rocks or beads. So as we repeat this rhyme, we'll do the first part and I want to show you an old game that used to be played with this. And this is another good one for older children, maybe school age kids to do that is great to do together, which practices some hand-eye coordination as well. So for this game, you can start 
by tapping on your thighs, then clapping, then tapping with your partner. We'll do it again, thighs, clap, partner, then thighs, clap, right hand with your partner's right hand, clap, left hand with your partner, clap, and then two hands in the middle. So it goes, peas, porridge, hot, peas, porridge, cold, peas, porridge in the pot, nine days old. All right, and you can try that together. So since our theme today is all about hungry animals, our next chant is about three little kittens who really want to eat some pie, but can't until they find the mittens that they've lost. So for this one, we recommend getting something to practice some more rhythm. All right, I have two little, well, they're actually mallets to play other instruments, but I'm going to tap them together. You can use rhythm sticks if you have wooden spoons, or if you don't have anything like that at home, clapping or patting your knees works perfectly. So this rhyme is a pretty old one where it actually comes from the 1800s in England, but it's traced back farther than that in the English folk tradition. So this, the chant also typically has four verses today. We're just going to do two with the kittens losing their mittens and then the kittens finding them. So get your sticks ready. Let's say it. Three little kittens have lost their mittens and they began to cry. Oh, mother dear, we sadly fear our mittens we have lost. What lost your mittens, you naughty kittens, then you shall have no pie. Meow, meow, meow. No, you shall have no pie. <gasps> Poor kittens. But now they found them. So three little kittens, they found their mittens and they began to cry. Oh, mother dear, see here, see here, our mittens we have found. Put on your mittens, you silly kittens, and you shall have some pie. Purr, purr, purr. Oh, let us have some pie. All right, and let's say it one more time, but this time right, I'd like to tell you about a little game you can play as you practice this rhyme. All right, this could be a really fun game to play at home with little ones if you hide things around your house and they have the length of the rhyme to find whatever it is that you've hidden. Don't make it too hard. So this is a good one to help kids start thinking about the rhythm but also anticipating the end of the verse so the more you do it the better they'll get at knowing what's coming and knowing and feeling the amount of time that they have left and so the goal is to finish by the end of this the first verse so that during the second verse you can celebrate together so this time i'm going to clap along and let's see if you can figure out or if you can feel what it would be like to play it as a game Oh, three little kittens have lost their mittens and they began to cry. Oh, mother dear, we sadly fear our mittens we have lost. What lost your mittens, you naughty kittens? Then you shall have no pie. Meow, meow, meow. Then you shall have no pie and hopefully they found whatever you were whatever was hidden and now it's time to celebrate the three little kittens they found their mittens and then they began to cry oh mother dear see here see here our mittens we have found put on your mittens you silly kittens and you shall have some pie purr 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 oh let us have some pie all right, so that's The Three Little Kittens, a very classic nursery rhyme from the 19th century of England. Before we sing goodbye today, we have another chant all about animals. Now, today was a lot of chants, so it's a lot of practicing that rhythm and feeling the beat. And our last one is also a comprehension activity that's inspired by the book Brown Bear, Brown Bear by Bill Martin and Eric Carle. 
So for this one, we've got a chant with some different animals that then we'll go back and review all of the animals that we talk about at the end. So our story, more chant goes, brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? So we'll put our brown bear up there. Then for our brown bear, well, what do you see? What was that? We'll say, I see a red bird looking at me. All right, so that's the format where we'll ask the animal what they see, and then we'll try to guess what animals next. So let's ask our red bird. Oh, red bird, red bird, what do you see? I see a yellow duck looking at me. Yellow duck, yellow duck, what do you see? I see a blue horse looking at me. We have blue horse, blue horse, what do you see? I see a green frog looking at me. Did you catch it? A green frog, green frog, what do you see? I see a purple cat looking at me. There's our purple cat. So purple cat, purple cat, what do you see? I see a white dog looking at me. We have our white dog. Then white dog, white dog, what do you see? I see a black sheep looking at me. Then black sheep, black sheep, what do you see? I see a goldfish looking at me. And goldfish, goldfish, what do you see? I see a teacher looking at me. So I have a teacher. So what do you think the teacher will see? Teacher, teacher, what do you see? I see the class looking at me. So I've got all of the boys and girls looking at the teacher. Now, what do you think the boys and girls see? Can we go and say our animals one more time in order? Boys and girls, boys and girls, what do you see? Then we see a brown bear, a red bird, a yellow duck, a blue horse, a green frog, a purple cat, Ooh. a white dog, a black sheep, a goldfish, and a teacher looking at us. So this is a really fun story to practice colors and practice that, re that repetition and that repeating pattern as well. And you can also practice anticipation and seeing if kids can catch those characters. You can also do this if you have the book Brown Bear, Brown Bear at home by flipping the pages really quickly forward and back and see if the kids can catch what's coming next. So it's a really fun one to practice together at home. And we like especially how it goes back at the end and practices everything together in order. So you can also use this as a sequencing activity saying, hmm, what came after the red bird? Or what did the green frog see? Okay, so this has lots of opportunities for kids to practice together. Lots of fun. friends. So I hope that you enjoyed our hungry animal chants and story today. We had a lot of rhythmic chants today, but we hope that you enjoyed it. And now it is time to say goodbye. So we'll do our sign for goodbye and our sign for friends. So say goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. All right, let's use our signs and sing. 
Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Hi, right, goodbye, friends. We hope that you have a great week, and we hope that we'll see you next time for Music and Mother Goose. Bye, friends.